Okay, so let us uh, have a very introductory discussion on input or sensors. I have listed here some sensors or input device like one is switch, the simplest sensor, okay, on, off or push button, press, one, just release, zero, okay, off, then ultrasonic, ultrasonic is used for radar, okay, so radar is another concept like it will check around you by using ultrasonic or infrared. And then photo cell or camera, okay, you know the camera, you know the photo, so these are the sensors, microphone, you know, okay, this one, accelerometer, gyroscope, another type of sensors, okay, you can, uh, okay, accelerometer is the acceleration, it's measuring the acceleration, how fast you are accelerating, okay, and the uh, gyroscope is using for tilt and some, and, and some other thing, okay, so these, are, these sensors are available in the current market. All these sensors are available. Encoder, potentiometer, compass, of course, digital compass is available inside your mobile phone. Okay, thermal and infrared sensor. Yes, thermal sensor is used in our air conditioner. Okay, infrared sensor, infrared sensor is used in camera even. Okay, you know, there are some infrared camera that can see at night, night vision camera. Okay, altimeter, inclinometer. Okay, by using some form of magnet, we can use it. Okay, so keyboard, mouse, touch screen, all these are the part of sensors. Okay, for sensor, I, I am going to discuss you two things in in future some other class. One is sensing by material, and another one is sensing by engineering. Okay, by material means there are some materials around us. Okay, that can uh, that can give us different amount of voltage, different amount of current, but there are some sensors that actually not not the sensor that can sense we want to sense like for tilting people use the physio sensor like if it's in this tilt position what is the pressure of here okay if in this position what is the pressure in this place okay they are measuring the pressure of this pain okay so it's measuring the pressure but it's telling us the tilting position or tilting degree Okay, so that's why I'm saying this is the this is the uh, sensing by engineer. So there are two types of sensing. One is by material, one is by sense. It is very important to sense sense our world around us. What is happening? The temperature of this room, the light amount of light of this room. We need to sense all these things. A number of sensors are available, but a number of sensors need to be developed. Like even now we cannot sense the smell, we cannot sense the taste. No, we cannot sense it. Okay, so we need to develop, people are saying this is the chemical reaction, what kind of reaction? Okay, so we need to do the research on it. Okay, we, 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 we need to know a lot of things, a lot of things. Okay, so that's why, like I'm dreaming, can we make some sensors on our brain so that it can sense whether I'm dreaming or not? Okay, so this is important to sense the environment. Hardware calibration. What is hardware calibration? Like different sensors are giving us us different thing. Like some sensors are giving a giving us just uh, resistance. Some sensors are giving us voltage. Some sensors are giving us uh, just currents. Okay, but our processor only can sense the voltage. Once again, our processor in our digital system, our processor like microcontroller or whatever you say raspberry pi it can only sense the voltage so if some sensor give us the resistance we cannot use it in our processor we have to calibrate it so we have to calibrate in such a way so that it can give us the voltage that our processor can read usually our processor can read 0 to 5 volt okay that is the thing we have mentioned here processor can read either digital or analog value. Digital means it can either read 0 and 1, okay, so it can read only 0 and 1. If our processor only can sense this thing, then we can say digital sensor, okay. But if our processor or system can sense analog value, like temperature from 0 to 40 degree, 
it can sense 0 degree, 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree, 4 degree, all these 40 values, then we need analog sensor. Okay, So, we can have either digital sensor or analog sensor. So, for digital should be 0 or 1. 0 means around 1 volt, 1 means above 3.5 volt, approximately around 5 volt. Okay, that is the point. Analog should be in a range according to the analog reference voltage. As I told you, if our processor can sense 0 to 5 volt, then our calibration circuit have to generate the voltage so that it, it do not cross the 5 volt and it do not go under 0 volt. Okay, so if we do like that, we cannot sense our environment properly. Okay, so that is one important issue. So that that's I'm saying reference voltage like zero to five volt as a as an example. Okay, so what happen if we get some voltage? It will convert that voltage to a number by using an ADC. Very simple, you know ADC in your digital logic design. Okay, if we'll get one volt, okay, then it will generate a number like if I call it it's 0 volt and it's 5 volt okay so and if we use ADC here it will get these voltage 0 to 5 volt and it will generate a number. If it generate 8 bit number, that means 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, value in between this range. So, it will get the value in between this range and it will generate a binary number in between this range. Okay, so that is the thing where we are calling it analog sensor. Analog sensor will work like that. So that is the thing is discussed here. Analog voltage to a, a DC converter and it will generate a numerical value usually 0 to 255 or for 8 bit binary number system. So that is the issue of a sensor. Okay. So, so a sensor input must be calibrated in a readable range of the processor with a circuit. As I told you our this ADC can sense 0 to 5 volt. So, if our calibration circuit give us less than 0 volt, it is not going to work. In the same way, if that gives us, that means if it gives us minus volt, it is not going to work. In the same way, it is give us more than 5 volt, it cannot decode, it cannot, it may be generate 1, 1, 1, 1 for all these values. Okay, so that is the important part. And this is another important part. Okay, hardware calibration, uh, oh, this is the hardware calibration block diagram. The red thing is written down. To get efficient result, hardware calibration should be in the way so that the lower value goes to lower range and upper value goes to upper range. Okay, I'm going to discuss this thing. Let us discuss the first part, the figure. So, how does it work? Like power, 12 volt, we are giving power using 12 volt power source into a sensor. Then the sensor is giving some form of sensing value, either its resistance or voltage or current to our calibration circuit. And the calibration since it's a circuit should have a ground connection. And this calibration circuit will generate a readable range of value like 0 to 5 volt. That is our basic architecture of a our block diagram of a hardware calibration circuit. Okay. But the, the red part is very important to get efficient result. Efficient result means like if you want this ADC or if you want our sensing system efficient, then the, the like in our, in our country in Bangladesh, our lowest temperature is around 4, 4 degree centigrade or something like this. So, we can make, we can consider it 0. Okay. And the maximum temperature is 45 degree as I can remember. So, we can make it 50 okay so we have to make our calibration circuit in such a way so that it can read at least 0 volt 0 degree temperature okay so if it gets 0 degree 
then our input should be around 0. Okay, input voltage should be around 0. Okay, and for highest temperature like 50 degree temperature, our voltage should go around 5 volt. If we can make our calibration circuit in such a way, then it will be the best efficient. Why? Because you can understand for 50 degree temperature, we can get 5 fraction. 5 fraction means if our, if we consider this system is 0 to 255, if, this, if, you, if you convert this number, it, it will become 0 to 255 decimal. Okay, that means for 50 degree temperature, if 0 degree temperature means 0 and 50 degree temperature means around 250, that means even we can get 5 fractions in 1 degree change. That means our measurement become more accurate. Okay, so that's why it's saying to get efficient result, hardware calibration should be in a way so that the lower values goes to the lower range and upper value goes to the upper range. Okay, maybe we can discuss a bit detail in our question answering session. Let us proceed on next slide. Okay, this is a different type of processor as I told you on some other time, uh, before some time, like you can have microprocessor, okay, most of the systems like computer um, or mobile phone and also some other processor like some other computer like Raspberry Pi, Intel NAC PC, NVIDIA, Jetson, okay, BeagleBone, all these things are used using microprocessor, okay, but the portable microcomputer is a bit different than the upper one because upper devices like mobile phone and personal computer it cannot connect the hardware or it cannot connect the uh, low level device very easily it cannot connect it okay but the portable micro computers like raspberry pi intel nac pc or not intel nac pc nvidia jetson jetson we have Google one we have some gpio okay so we can connect the sensor directly with the computer okay but our traditional computer like this laptop or in our mobile phone it's not so easy to connect any sensor with this phone or this computer very easily <coughs> in that case you have to make a calib yeah, circuit interfacing circuit okay so can have different type of microprocessor and also uh, microcontrollers so actually in this current world there are two types of microcontroller like two companies one is one they are being making pic series microcontroller another comp another company they are making atmel micro microcontroller okay so just two company is building two series of computer and a logic mode there are number of logic modules okay but we can consider three three way or three parts one is arduino stm32 these are the very small uh, low power consumed cheap microcontroller based uh, what we can say trainer board okay so we can build very we can build any digital system very easily by using this kind of system arduino or stm32 in stm32 maybe the iot device is already built in here okay plc is another uh, another device programmable logic controller okay so there are there are industrial product okay there are number of industrial product like siemens and also some other companies are building this kind of product so that we can use in uh, in, in, is an industry like uh, in very rough situation uh, a bit higher temperature okay the voltage is fluctuating even okay so in that in that condition this system can work okay so this kind of systems are called PLC and another one is FPGA uh, we are going to have a lecture on it okay FPGA field programmable gate array which is actually uh, opens open processor or open electronic circuit board or circuit chip where we can design our own digital logic circuit okay we are going to have our different lecture but by using this fpga there are some fpga boards trainer board okay so this kind of things are also available so we are calling these things as as logic module and the microcontroller is microcontroller and microprocessor also there are two type three types of microprocessor one is 
for mobile, one is for computer and another one is for different type of portable microphone.